This particular course and lecture is meant for uh, practicing students and the occasional uh, what do you say serious amateur hacker who enjoys making their own uh, small products and uh, so on. I am sure several of you would have come across the necessity to package a small what you call electronic circuit that you have the whole thing is addressed towards that. As my hope I think I should po put your signal this thing here as my uh, this thing shows here I am from the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore India. <laughs> so, this whole what you call lecture series has 60 sessions lasting a little over uh, maybe 30 or 32 hours. There are 4 videos which are shot on our premises and then I would like to acknowledge the immense uh, help taken by from my colleagues who have worked on this for a long time. This course was being run in uh, the Indian Institute of Science Center for Electronic Design and Technology for over 35 years. It started with uh, something and eventually we have moved on now. So, you see here I will start with the very first slide without uh, too much of hedo. Uh, sir, if you can show me. We have this issue of what is a product, what is industrial design and then what is design and then fi finally, you know uh, what constitutes what. Over the years things have improved tremendously. So, you see here design seems to integrate mainly usability of the product, how well the product can be used by the intended user. So, in this case first thing that attracts your attention when you look at any product is probably aesthetic appeal, how it looks it goes, we cannot ignore it. Whether you talk about a mobile, whether you talk about a home, whether you talk about your own uh, what do you call any other objects that you own aesthetic appeal and then once you touch it suddenly you find out the ergonomics how well it can be handled. Some people hold a mobile in their hand and all that and when you go to a shop at least in these parts of the world they will give you a mobile which is a mock up. It behaves, it feels, it weighs about the same time as a thing. So, you choose between one or two models then you come to the functionality of it. Functionality is how well you get all the various things and so on and finally, ultimately the thing seems to be about how well the product can be marketed. Marketing again it is not about selling, marketing is all about how you get the feedback from the user. A lot of times user is not ready for the product yet, but then how do you work in the near future and then how do you have a visionary future. From here part of this has been taken from standard uh, what you call textbooks. So, you see here the core benefit we have and finally, on top of it is an actual product which has tangible and in intangible uh, things sorry. So, it has this tangible and intangible uh, benefits and so on. There is an augmented product which uh, you know involves all the finance and all that. So, you have finally, products which are sold. So, very nice to see such things and then we I probably you know need to take a, a little I do not know whether I can call it a break or uh, whatever it is industrial design as uh, defined by our patent office several places is about anything which you can file and you can claim as a different thing you know is a termed as any physical occurrence of an object is considered a new industrial design. It is not about the industrial design as a service, industrial design as a philosophy, industrial design as you know what do you call uh, call to you know for changing this thing and all that. So, if you see I am sorry for the what do you call small letters, a representation is exact of the article on which the design has been applied identifying then 
how if the ornamental in article likely be confused with a trademark suggest any this this thing and so on so i suggest you go to a place called the vipo and also our own patent offices vipo and patent offices have specifically made definitions of what it is okay it is not mine not all mine in the actual what they call presentation uh, i have spent a little more time on this and then you can understand from the patent office industrial design is something else saying already something which can be producible and all which is very different from the original first article that is there so i suggest you read it in the 60 sessions which are uploaded i expect that uh, these things will become little clearer so the next slide have a look at it just have keep looking at it lot of pigeons ah, and then you see what has started here oh suddenly You have seen what started as a very simple uh, object. Now you see it is actually there is a huge behavior of activity whenever it comes to these uh, things. You can't pigeonhole the various aspects of it. Just keep let the slide show run. I will come back. I mean I will get back to you. Have a look at all these things. So, you see here what started as pigeon hole suddenly as more and more activities have come there is no place for the pigeons. In fact, if I go back here again you noticed here then the extra left uh, top corner no there is an extra pigeon the face is not visible it is a stupid allegory I mean excuse me for the word stupid, but I am meaning it looks a uh, okay allegory in some conditions it works saying the activities are equally defined I mean clearly defined and they can be run one after the other which was probably once upon a time things were, but if you have to take a modern product like a mobile phone or including uh, anything anything what you see things are very very complicated they seem to be getting done together and then all of them have a an emotional component in it and how they are placed in your mind seems to be equally important as this. So, it is a behavior of activity it is not as if no it is just an activity. So, the next slide shows me this uh, what do you call uh, <laughs> so many large amount of uh, things which goes into the manufacture of a product. What looks like a very simple product is no longer something you cannot call it an electronic product and then secondly things are getting what you call more and more uh, complicated even if you have to take a very routine thing you see at the right side you have a wall clock made as a concept by one of our students. I have this wall clock which uh, has anything you see it looks very different from the other things this is done by 
my design student and uh, obviously I mean she is somewhere uh, I do not even know where it is. But however in your uh, <coughs> what you call it home or workshop or anything it is very easy for you to fabricate the sheet metal which I have shown down and at the left we have something which could be done in a plastic or anything. You see here slowly as we come we are slowly getting to the concept of three important things a package needs to deal with. One is there is an environment outside that thermal issues to be solved and there is interconnection between the inside of the enclosure and the external world. So, the dotted line which is there around is typically is supposed to represent our activity. To make it dust proof we can seal it and then what will happen to the heat. So, obviously, you know heat will have a problem you cannot take it out. If you make holes you are blowing all the dust in as if this were not enough how do you take out the connections and how do you ensure while the physical reality is always you know dust and moisture and all that what about the electrical things like EMI and uh, radiation otherwise and I know these days people call about uh, non ionizing and ionizing radiation and all how it gets affected. Here is an older thing I have taken uh, what you call extensive uh, I have depended on extensively on what is available in the free domain. You see all those aluminum uh, various things there is a fan there and then there are what you call gold colored uh, some pipes then so on things have become complicated what what looks like a very simple PC or uh, what you call a laptop is not as uh, easy as it is it has to do everything. And you see this this what our group has done this is a drive for a electric vehicle left side that was what was you know we could uh, finally finalize the design and all that and then eventually it ended up in this beautiful enclosure. One of the first things you will see in this enclosure is there are special connectors here you have seen this these connectors get the power in and send the power out the ones with the pins or the plug configuration is the one with that feeds the motor that blue colored uh, device and this red one is the one where you get the power from power into it. And then on the left side we have a <coughs> multipole connector multi way connector which uh, ensures that all the signals and all are taken care of. My colleagues in the field they have been working on agricultural uh, what do you call uh, uh, sensor operations. You see those two uh, what do you call dedicated uh, people up the thing. It is a wooden pole something you know which we could erect on the top and then they have put uh, various antennas they have made enclosures and you see right side uh, top no this enclosure is the one that they have made. We can seal it here then what about the <laughs> actual sensor how does it get sealed and still it should be contact with the moisture the thing around and all that no. This lecture series is a little about it, but and then we have this stuff about IP protection or index of protection as per IEC, you know, 60529. What do these things mean? Evaluation of uh, you know classifications and so on. How do you do it? I try to explain a little in these lectures. While that is real and that is uh, something related to what do you say technical there is something which is user related in this another design student made us all this is some biomedical equipment you know which should be easily this that and all that and identifiable and so on. <coughs> there is a small list of all the lectures that uh, have been included in this the total 30 hours and then thing has been uh, split into 60 sessions. Enclosure design for electronics equipment runs is a little one of the longer ones that is the first lecture part of these things what you have seen are from there. Then you have aspects and features that are non electrical and essential to electronic product realization. Electronics people still uh, the field has become so specialized 
they must do tremendous analysis and optimization. It is not left that much to simple guesswork or gut feeling. So, as part of this non electrical uh, things are all those uh, features which I was talking about saying how do you make sure it is uh, very much presentable like that. So, next one in a small electronic equipment how do you do the simple design you should go through the lecture in patients then design is applied to small electronics products and projects. So, I try to show something next picture actually comes to something which we what do you call we enjoy, but not if it is your main work. I am sure several engineering students would not like drawing and they would have you know try to do other thing, but then drawing is essential for communication. So, we have a highly developed engineering language on how to do representation. If you are electronics people you know schematics you know presentation in a schematic what represents what and uh, how it is. And in the case of mechanical we also have such things saying how are the what do you call uh, three view engineering drawings are prepared and so on like that. However, in the case of products something else comes into place somehow we need to learn sketching to quickly communicate our ideas to everybody. And as we communicate and as we sketch we improve our own understanding of the product. And at this point fortunately on our premises we had some what you call um, trained uh, uh, graphics uh, designers, but then I have relied heavily and tried to retrieve things from the internet from various what you call uh, blogs and so on. So, one of those things I have included it and then I would like to acknowledge it is all acknowledged in the lecture properly. <coughs> you should understand how difficult it is to make it and all the trouble they have gone in putting it and you must try it out yourself. Next comes to having done the sketching and all that invariably we need to make a quick model. We are all familiar with this model making when it comes to architectural models and in fact we are amazed at it when you say an architectural model you in fact you get a bird's eye view of the whole uh, world <coughs> all around that bird's eye view seems to be impressed oh, I have changed. No it is recorded online only I thought this is how it is other shirt instead of hats you know this is my normal shirts which I wear that was intentional I wanted to show that. Uh, I am from IAC and then this is what is my normal wear in all my lectures I appear like this. So, I notice that all these uh, architectural uh, models and all that they are made in a particular way they are very very impressive. And in fact, these days it has gone to the next level saying a lot of them are renderings and the renderings have been made so convincing and nice and uh, point of view has been arranged well difficult for you to believe that it is not a real place. That is how they first make the sale it is again one more thing unless you have demand you can start the construction unless there is something you know some some idea which we need to know nobody will pick up parts of the project. So, you are most likely to come into contact with these things there and then if you are one of those curious people and you keep looking for products all around. And if you have gone to the CES, the, convec uh, the convection which is held in, uh, I am sorry, convention <coughs> which is held uh, announcing new product, suddenly you will discover there is a new world out there and it is ready. Same thing which happens with automobile shows. And it is a matter of time from the time you see the concept and the actual availability for you getting shorter and shorter. Some of them are available in the next year maybe within 12 months in somebody has worked on it earlier. Some of them takes a little longer we call it futuristic. So, you need to find out how to make a quick model and then stuff in uh, plastic and then I try to make it relatively simple and easy. So, that uh, but the key to it is you must attempt it and make it yourself. 
and we do not uh, there is no way of my sending you a kit and uh, this is not the full uh, thing you need to practice it on your own and then try to make things. Having done this we come back to some uh, very important thing in the case of all our in reality. Reality is very rarely people start for usual small projects and maybe a few hundred uh, enclosures it is unlikely everybody tries to start from the beginning and make a new full enclosure for it. So, anything you can think of is probably off the shelf it is available. You need to go around look for the catalogs and then after the e-commerce and uh, what you call this online thing has started things may look a little expensive, but anything you can think of it is already available with more features when you thought were necessary. And then related to that is, is the documentation, how do you read the documents that they have presented there, how do you select one of them. At this point it is a what do you call I would not call it a trial and error I will say it is you know learning experience you probably start with a slightly bigger uh, you know volume than required after that you try to after you make the first unit then you once again go back to the what do you call the catalogs and select things. We come to very very interesting uh, things here you have seen this there is something about safety. So, we <laughs> over here in these parts uh, I think we believe there is some benefactor uh, protecting us out there. So, we are a little lax in these things. So, I have shown you examples of things which are not uh, you know very very safe local things and eventually everything goes back to this index of protection class that has been started from the IEC and uh, DIN norms and parallelly that the you know <coughs> American what you call electrical manufacturers association had themselves much before uh, these electronics thing came they went about standardizing. So, you have a NEMA classes and then there is a little a testing. So, this testing well I have seen it uh, in reality you probably have to look up the you know videos online to see how harsh things can be. Then on our premises we have a few of these uh, sealed enclosures which I have been using for some equipment wanted to show you. This is the one what I was talking to you in which you know we tend to be we tend to believe it is all right somebody will take care of us this public like utility various things are kept outside not out of vandalism they are not maintained well. So, I have taken pictures of those things which I feel now they are valid for anybody and slowly we come to a border area bordering rather a border line area called EMI ceiling. The effects are felt electrically, but the handling is by the mechanical and fabrication people. So, this EMI ceiling is critical then after that something about a little more details about the sealed enclosures then how do you make gasketting practice gasketing basics. These two basics and uh, practice is actually taken from various sources it is readable if you are in that area if you are not in that uh, not particularly interested in it uh, you need not pay too much attention. So, starting from 40th lecture you see that off the shelf there are various enclosures made out of metal and then the 41 uh, what you call lecture now is about calling it a box understanding boxes and documentation. So, in at least here you cannot think out of the box you can think about the box and then tremendous documentation is available and then you need to see how well you can understand something for you very much related to the it is that is how the word aluminum has been used there very much related to this is enclosures which with have a heat sink built into it and then how do you detail the insides of those things how do you read the documentation once more. Now, if you go out and see all the things which you see all over the place now these days you have the GSM and CDMA boxes and all that nice they just work. I have no clue about the electronics because they say it is too complicated but at least the 
heat sinks and uh, those things are understandable. Uh, something uh, which I started in the one of the earlier slides about, I have covered most of both of the particle of the things if you see. First of all, no, how to handle the heat business, then about the other functional aspects, we come to interconnection aspects of it. In this case, it is particularly about how to choose a proper connector such that the your enclosure works properly, it will never fail. This has been directly taken from trade catalogs and uh, whatever they have supplied and at the time of uh, retrieval uh, that is around uh, May 2017, these were current, but I suggest you go back and see what else is available. Some of them look archaic and ancient, but the things are very valid like current carrying capacity, number of this and orientation and so on like that. Basic USB, it is a standard and then we have a A and B and then I have a mini and a micro USB and then we have a host and then we have the usual plug-in and all that standards are fixed and slowly things are getting evolved as they become smaller and smaller. These things have not changed. Similarly, if you talk about the end type of connector or in the case of power uh, things, these things have not changed. They are still there and are likely to continue. So, the that lecture was about the connectors. The next lecture if you see here, this is something which has been a convenience and uh, both a blessing and you know made things too easy. So, we have this computer aided design in layout. So, in this case again I would like to stress that we have uh, computer aided design from the analytical optimization point of view, computer aided design from the way of making manufacturing easy, how do you make drawings and for us to understand the various uh, things is about how to lay out all the components and parts and all these things. So, over your professional career if you can build up a library <coughs> instead of going and bringing the parts you just bring the library and arrange things while it has been done extremely well in uh, EDA design electronic design automation it is not that easily done at this level. Again architecture you have pipe and drawings are standardized everything you know structural elements are standardized in the case of equipment we still have uh, it is a prerogative of the designer. So, this point no I do not know how to stress types of CAD there are too many out there whatever I am familiar with I have used it over here in uh, Bangalore. Uh, two of the things about the Dassault and Siemens I have a understanding with uh, the colleges. So, either SOLIDWORKS or solid edge is taught by default and I am sure lot of pro E people and uh, CATIA people and so many of you are there and then good old Autodesk products are out there all of them are equally welcome and I am not endorsing one or the other. And if you have the what I call patience, you can go download uh, limited, uh, you know, user limited save uh, type of things, use it short time. And in my considered opinion, buy one, <laughs> buy anything is as good as you buy it. So, coming back to our list of the slides here, you see that how to make CAD equipment, it looks too much of it, no, but. I have kept on trying to give as many examples as possible CAD sample example, layout, integrating products with CAD, product detailing and comes to CAD physical models saying just like just like you are able to use your EDA tools for having a schematic run a beautiful simulation that is you can have a mixed mode uh, analog digital simulation at any frequency you like and eventually after you make a physical printed wiring board everything is accounted for and then you will never have a surprise. 
because process people will take care of the other nitty gritty of the physical fabrication and you as a electronics designer have made taken care of everything starting with a schematic diagram making a rat's nest making a layout running simulation and making tools available tools in that case are <coughs> various uh, what you call photolithography devices and drilling and routing something which uh, manufactures it and then there are programs which take your programs and then optimize things on large panels. So, I think 600 mm and 600 mm seems to be a standard panel I am not familiar with it everything gets done as magic automatically it is not as big a magic as a scan okay or the one inside our heads, but it is still a working magic. In the case of mechanical what has happened is these files these CAD files can now be sent downstream for the full manufacture if it is plastic you just need to make the part and then the plastic you know gets done automatically in case it is metal sheet metal including you know high power gas cutting is available and laser cutting is available it gets done automatically not automatically with lot of human intervention solids milling is no issue at all CNC started with actually machining and now something which uh, some of us you know are amazed when we see it on a TV and then little hurt when we get laid off saying assembly is automatic. So, all this new programs which I had mentioned they also take care of sequence of assembly and so on and there are uh, um, process planning people who take these drawings and ensure no you make a robot which makes your car it is far far safer than what you would have assembled yourself. This is about summarizes uh, all the lectures and all which are likely to be covered there are 60 sessions uh, and then if you go through the things I am not yet uh, fully familiar with it help is on hand somebody is there and then uh, the MOOC and NPTEL people um, have certain requirements and all that which I am sure they are all you know at the time of registration and all those things are there. I am not uh, what do you call I will be I am not very clear about it because my this thing is only about the technical part of it however trying to clarify your uh, any gaps of your understanding all that help is on hand. So, thank you and I say welcome to the course and one small apology I would like to do I mean I would like to take for you is first is my, my whole speech is accented in fact in some of the things somebody has written why does he not speak in English to me it looked like English <laughs> ok. So, kindly what do you call I want to put up with me uh, understand our uh, limitation this is the only way I know how to talk and all of us talk like this written I understand we can do there is no simple transcription available. Secondly I have relied heavily on online public resources. So, in a way while I am not uh, what do you call uh, selling or marketing anybody's products it is uh, retrieved from the internet at the time of it. Uh, I am happy that such information has been put there and if uh, I feel all of you know should also do and in case there are some requirements there know uh, make use of it and things change do not look at what is presented here and then think no this is the end uh, maybe 2 years or 3 years onwards no many 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 more items especially connectors and all those uh, standard enclosures and then various types of you know programs all of them keep coming up all the time. So, to sum up I have a small issue with uh, accented uh, speech secondly I have relied on online resources which I expect you to do thirdly uh, which is probably final and I will stop here all the time new questions are coming new problems are you know cropping up there are no answers there are no canned answers uh, but if you do like that automatically uh, something else will happen there you need to you know try and come out with alternatives 
once an alternative has come then try to work out things until they come into the proper uh, form and then in, I think it is time I stop here. So, thank you uh, I will be looking forward for you <coughs> for taking this class and then giving whatever benefit out of it and maybe for a second round uh, we can uh, probably take a feedback and uh, try to see. But the only problem is in making it general we can lose uh, you know the uh, specifics and making it very specific uh, the abstraction is lost. I try to make a proper uh, call balance between them and if you start young if you do not understand do not worry about it. If you are uh, let us say somebody who started in first or second year of engineering is the right time to start. If you are a school uh, what do you call uh, project person people see your project will be amazed at it where did you get all this uh, you need not credit me but uh, it is available for you. So, thank you I will stop here bye.